Ми щасливі бачити всі вас тут і молитися разом з вами. Сердечно вітаю всіх наших щощеників, які приїхали, щоб жити з нами, а також сестерку на хім, які молиться з нами цього вечора. Особливе вітання всім вірним, які зібралися наші кадети. Ще з піонами чуємо ту силу молити яка підтверджує, що з нами Бог. Our heartfelt welcome to this Vesper service on this first Sunday of Great Mass in our magnificent Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. We are so happy to see you, to have this opportunity to pray together. We especially are grateful for the participation of Bishop Joseph McFadden, Brother Bishop of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, a heartfelt welcome to him and to all of our priests who have chosen to celebrate and who have joined us, and to all the religious sisters praying with us this evening. A most special welcome to all the faithful gathered in this cathedral. We will all experience together today the power of prayer manifested in God's presence amidst all of us. All of the bishops, my brother bishop, and all the priests and religious sisters, the faithful, all of us can relate how in our own lives, if God wants something to happen, he will provide for it to happen in his own miraculous ways. We continue to see our faith how God initiates opportunities to turn to him in praise and worship. His love is so powerful, God seeks us out. We come together this evening seemingly to begin a special journey of venerating the Shroud of Turin and the Holy Icons. Yet today is not the beginning. It is the happening of something already in the works for well over two years. This is happening, I believe, because of God's own initiatives in the hearts of many who have been touched in the process of preparing this day of veneration. There is a larger purpose here directed by God himself. For reasons beyond the time to explain tonight, this shroud was the second copy received for the faithful of Ukraine from the Vatican. And our patriarch, Lubomir Cardinal Fuser, desired that only one copy remain in Ukraine for veneration by all Catholics and Orthodox throughout the nation. His great vision was that the use of one shroud was, would be a source of unity for everyone. For reasons beyond my understanding, I was privileged to learn of this and quickly made advances to secure this, the second copy of the Shroud from the Ukrainian Catholic Church here in the United States of America. It presented a bit of a challenge, but eventually I was able to send the Cathedral Rector of Father Ivan Denfield to Ukraine, who maneuvered through the paperwork and custom procedures and personally brought the shroud to Philadelphia. Thereafter, it was as if the finger of God of, was quickly and masterfully at work. Successively, people with good hearts and gifted in various ways presented themselves to make this happen. Father Daniel Tron, with the help of other priests and staff in the Chancery, has skillfully and with much dedication coordinated this manifestation. The artistic gifts of the well-known iconographer Christine Dockwood were immediately put to work in the creation of this beautiful tomb for the shroud, built with the skillful hands of all the cost. Many good souls, including Ken Hutchins and Teresa Sivar, various holy priests and others, have done tremendous creative work in assisting with the planning and the preparation of promotional materials. We are very grateful to all of these people for their willingness to share from their generosity. There is a greater power at work here. They have recognized this and have responded generously to God's initiative among us. You are also a very significant part of this great manifestation. Each of us responded to an inner call and inner summons to participate this evening. You could have not come. You could have worried about parking or about the various things you have yet to do. 
However, something within you tugged at your heart, tugged at your mind to be here. You chose to respond to God's initiative. God loves you. God loves me. God provides for our needs. Our needs to be close with Him. And so you are here in this magnificent cathedral watching as it gets slowly darker as the sun goes down. Hopefully you will have a service book in your hand where you can share with the neighbor so that you can fully participate. You are about to enter a very special prayer experience. We invite you to participate. We are graced with especially gifted individuals who will lead us in singing the Vesper service. They are only our leaders in prayer. All are asked to pray. Don't worry whether you have a good voice or not. God's presence is manifested in our participation in prayer, everyone's participation in one combined prayer. Become aware of your surroundings, the increasing darkness, the fragrance of incense, the meaningfulness of each word used in prayer for Chan, and the change that will happen when we greet Jesus Christ as a joy-giving life. By offering this prayer, you and I offer our whole life, our whole self, to God. Service begins with the chanting of Psalm 103. All of God's creation is cited in this song. We are reminded that the environment has been created and belongs to God. We are mere stewards of this great wealth. We are encouraged to be good stewards, nurturing God's creation and environment. And so we thank God by telling Him all His works of thank you for everything. It is proper for us to thank God the end of the day. The celebrant silently reads eight prayers called prayers of light because we give thanks to God who is our true light even when the sun is set. Then we chant Psalm 140, selected because of the second verse which reads, Let my prayer rise like incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. The church will be incensed at that time. This is your opportunity, my opportunity, to purify ourselves of everything which may have defiled us through the day. It is a precious time to offer your sins up to the Lord. Admit them, surrender them to the Lord. Humble yourself to Him as the incense rises. Notice how the fragrance of the incense overtakes us and rises to the heavens. You and I are called to holiness and in closeness in God. Shake off that which acts as an anchor preventing you from your journey of holiness. Shake it off. Let it go. A very special time in the Vesper service is the chanting of the hymn, O Joyful Light. At that time you'll see how the church is flooded with a light to proclaim Jesus Christ as a joy-giving light to all. Allow yourself to be consumed by this light. Be very aware of His presence. Be still and know that God is among us. The spirit that pervades the best for service on this Sunday of Orthodoxy is one of joy, victory, triumph, honor, veneration of the holy icons. This Sunday commemorates when the Ecumenical Council held in the year 787 was convoked and restored the veneration of holy images or icons. This followed a few centuries of much harsh conflict over whether veneration of icons should be permitted, as well as other, as well as other heresies which were decisively ended by this ecumenical council. This is a festive celebration for the whole church, Eastern and Western. Since the year 1842, the annual celebrations have included much of what you and I will do this evening. The profession of faith, the public veneration of icons of Jesus Christ and the Holy Mother of God, a prayer of thanksgiving for victory over heresies, and prayer to the living and 